everybody and welcome back to Art a la carte and another video where I get to test out some super fun art supplies. A big thanks to the company Truckle who wanted to not only sponsor one of my videos but also sent me some of these cool art supplies to test out and to give my honest review opinion. And so first thing they sent is this watercolor board panel thing and I have to tell you I never even knew these things existed. I didn't even know what it was. I had to Google it to figure out what it was and what I was supposed to do with it. So the first thing I have to do is try to get it out of the package, which should not be this challenging, but five hours later, finally got it out of the package. And so what this is, it's actually just one thing. I know it looks really thick, but it's actually one piece of watercolor paper. Let me read to you what they say about this. So these are sturdy panels for watercolor lovers. So there's is an aluminum panel and on the other side is glued down 260 pound weight cold press arches watercolor paper, which is a really nice watercolor paper. Supposedly because it's on this aluminum panel, it won't buckle or warp like with most watercolor paper. So I'm going to really test that out. The next thing they sent me was a whole selection of different types of watercolor brushes that they sell. So the first set they sent was the Golden Tuckthon. This set came with four different brushes, one super awesome lining brush, two thinner brushes, and then this nice half inch flat brush. Really nicely quality made. I am excited to try these out. The bristles are super, super soft. The next three were packaged so amazingly well. Everything came packaged amazingly, but these ones came in their own little cryogenic little tubes. And then inside them, they came with a little tubing casing around the bristles to really keep everything super safe. So these are the Kolinsky brushes. So in this set is three different brushes for me to play with. These tend to be a little bit more fluffier. Um, so I'm curious to see how well they paint if like the bristles fall out or stuff like that. The last two, I have to say, remind me of like broomsticks. I want to go like have a small miniature Quidditch match with these. So these are a quill mop brush. So there's a large one and a smaller one. And I have to say they have this coating on the bristles that keep them just super firm. But as soon as you put it in a little bit of water and rinse it out, it, they just soften up to be the softest thing I've ever touched. And you're going to probably want to rinse all of your bristles. Here's a little clean cup of water that I have. I rinsed my brish bristles and as you can see, the water is not as clean as it was. So it's all this kind of coating that keeps the bristles really safe. It's not a bad thing. A lot of really nice fancy brushes have that so you don't get a damaged brush. So now comes the point where I have to begin to create something on this one panel. No pressure. Don't mess this up, Valerie. You got one shot at this. So I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to paint. So I went over on Instagram and asked you guys for suggestions and ideas. And you guys gave me tons of things. And I decided to pick the one that would cause the most damage to the watercolor paper itself. And that's anything that I do with galaxies because you have to put so much water on it, so much paint. And I just, I had layer upon layer upon layer upon layer that it is brutal to the watercolor paper. And I thought if, if it's going to stand, this will be the test to see how well it can stand up against water and working on that. So I decided to do a galaxy cat. Not exactly certain why, but that's what I decided to do. So I sketched in a quick little doodle of a cat face using a little color pencil and then began the process of putting the first wash, the first of many washes. As you can see, I am fully dousing the entire paper except for the tips of the ears, the eyes, and the nose. I kept those dry because I wanted to see how much the paint feathered into the, the into that those dry spots or did it stay out and it it did it worked great the paint did not seep over into the dry areas and i absolutely love how my paints interacted now i have kind of a gradient of types of paint everyone asks what brand of watercolor paint do i use and i really don't have a set brand i have like a mixture of brands because i haven't found the brand that I really want to use yet. So I've got some really high quality paints and then some that are, you know, yeah, a little bit, but this board really just 
made these colors pop. Throughout this process here, you're going to see me adding paint and then letting it dry and then going back in and adding more paint. And never once did it buckle or warp or anything like that. After about the second, maybe third wash, I let it dry completely. And then I decided to find out how it would handle with a slightly different art medium. So I grabbed my Ink Tense color pencils, which is kind of like um, a color pencil that once you get it wet, it turns into this vibrant ink. Because of the watercolor paper is such a nice quality, it's got a really strong texture. It's not meant for colored pencils. So when I started adding water to that, some of the ink tents just stuck to the paper and you can kind of see this texture going on, which I wasn't too excited about, but it was in no way the paper's fault or the paintbrush's fault. It was my fault because this paper is not meant for colored pencils. It's meant for watercolor. Then I decided to grab again a different medium and I went with my color burst powders. I love these color burst powders. If you haven't seen the video where I played around with color burst, I'll leave it as one of the suggested videos at the end so you can go and check that out. But all you do is you hoof out these little powdered colors and then you wet them with either a mist bottle or your paints and then they explode into bursts of color. And I haven't played with them for a while so I kind of overdid it with the colors. As you can see, they went absolutely crazy. So one would think, okay, so Valerie, you have just pretty much destroyed uh, this painting. You've added everything but the kitchen sink. So there's only one thing left to do, and that's to add the kitchen sink. I went ahead and grabbed out my white Indian ink to add some starbursts onto that, and it works great. I will warn you, if you decide to do this technique where I, you put a little bit of the ink on the end of a paintbrush, and then you tap it on another paintbrush, um, and it splatters it everywhere. This is a messy technique. So I put a painter smock on and, you know, cover up things because paint goes everywhere. It's a messy thing, but it gives this really cool effect. There's absolutely no way to control though where the splatters go. Once that dried, then I began to set in with the line art detail. So I took in some of my darker paint and began to add this kind of smoky uh, black texture. And I used a lot of the lining brushes and the thinner brushes where, as before, I was using a lot of the fluffy mop brushes. There wasn't too much that I didn't like about these brushes. They all performed really well. They held the paint and the water well. There was absolutely not a single bristle missing from any of them. I will tell you the only thing I didn't like about the brushes was, was on the mop brushes. And it happened to be the, one of the things that I liked the most about it visually. It's this little plastic binding that kind of makes it look like the broomstick. It looks so cool but i did find that when i rinsed my paint brushes out that the water would get stuck up inside there and it would you know maybe if i used more inks with that it could be hard to get it clean in there as long as you're really careful and you're not totally submerging your brushes or letting them soak in the water that's not a huge issue but that was i had you know i told you i was going to give you my honest opinion and that was honestly the only thing i could think of that maybe it was a con in the brushes these three sets might be my new favorite brushes. I love the weight. I love the feel of them. I loved the panel. Through all of my crazy painting, it did not warp at all. It held out beautifully. The only thing I would be nervous about is because you got one shot with this. It's a panel. There's not like a whole pad of paper under there. So there's a little a little bit of a pressure with that. I think I would seriously consider using a panel if I had like a serious project that I wanted to work on. So to wrap this up, I just want to give a big thanks to the Treckle Art Supplies. I am totally scoping out some of their other products on their website because I love the ones that they did send me. I love the brushes that they have and I'm kind of thinking, hmm, maybe I want to try some more of their stuff. I'll leave a link to their website in the description box below. So if you'd like to jump over to the website and take a peek yourself, you can definitely do that. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me in this video. I hope you enjoyed this review of art supplies and watching me crazily create some art. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos and as always god bless you guys and we'll see you in another art video bye bye